Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elevating Your Life with Paul LaVale. Oh, ready for another fun day, another fun show. I have with us today, J.L. Caban. He was born Jose Luis Caban IV. He's a Puerto Rican American writer who was born in Manhattan, New York to his father, uh, Jose Luis Caban III and mother, Lisa Caladine. Um, he was raised uh, in the borough of the Bronx in his youth. He attended public schools in the Bronx, which included the Walt Disney School, Dr. Daniel Hale Williams School, and Harry S. Truman High School. How fun, where he became an honors English student in addition to joining the Roman Greco, hope I said that right, wrestling team, as well as a baseball team. He then enrolled at Lehman College, where he became a peer counselor and a disc jockey for his college radio station. How fun, Joey. And then he earned- It was fun. Yeah, Bachelor of Arts degree in psychology and a Master of Science in education. He went on to teach English at an inner city school in the South Bronx before joining the New York City Police Department, ultimately achieving the rank of sergeant. I want to say thank you for your service to others and thank you for being on the show. I'm so honored to have you here. Thank you so much. It's my honor, actually, to be on your show. Thank you, Joey. And one other thing about Joey is he is the author of two fantastic books, and we're going to hear about those today. So I would like to begin with maybe if you'd like to share a little more of your background and kind of what put you behind writing these books. And tell us about that, Joey. Sure. So. Basically, I always loved reading. It was my passion to read. Um, I got that from my mother. My mother was a huge reader, and she also writes, but for herself, um, nothing published. Uh, and that she likes it that way. I tell her all the time, you know, publish, publish. No, it's for me. It's for me. <laughs> so um, one of her favorite books was Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. And that happened to be the first book that I ever read from cover to cover. And when I finished, I said, oh my God, I need to meet this guy. Like I, this is, this was written for me, you know? Um, the character Holden Caulfield, you know, he goes, he gallivants throughout New York City because he gets kicked out of his boarding school. And, you know, basically you're just uh, reading about his adventure before he happens to go home and, you know, take his lickings from his parents. But just the way he wrote it and the way he expressed himself, the way he made Holden express himself, I said, wow, this was written for me. So right then and there, I knew. I, I was gonna have to write something like this. And funny story, I actually started writing just with my pen and paper, his book. I was just writing it out, not just reading it, but writing it word for word on, on pieces of paper, just because I wanted to be immersed in it. I, I wanted to be a part of it, you know? And that was my way of, of becoming even closer, developing, developing a bond, uh, not only, with the character, but with the author himself, who, you know, um, I don't know if many of you might know that he was a recluse. So, you know, he wasn't, he was not somebody that I could even imagine meeting, but I, but I imagined anyway. So, and then uh, shortly after that, a few years later, I started working on my own book, which was moving on. And um, I was only 18 years old at the time. Wow. So I'm writing this book, um, really having no real skill, I thought, I said, uh, who am I? I'm not, I'm not an author. I just, I'm pouring myself and my thoughts and my feelings onto this piece of paper. And um, eventually along the way, I sort of lost touch with it. Um, I went on to other things, sort of threw it in a, you know, in the proverbial uh, drawer, you know, threw it away and, and it got filed away somewhere in, in lost land. And then years later, now 20 something years later, I'm cleaning out my things, looking over old college papers and, and, and such. And I see this manuscript and I take it out and I said, you know, blow off the dust, you know, the, uh, the pounds and pounds of dust were flying in the air. And I started reading through it. And then I said, wow, I, I think I want to finish this. I think I want to continue to pursue this. 
again, 30, almost 30 years later. So I do it. Um, finally finish it, get in touch with um, Dar Dowling, which is my CMO from uh, eBook Solutions, um, publisher being uh, Michael Bees. And we get in touch and she helps me publish it. And that was the first book, Moving On. So that was kind of surreal, actually, you know, seeing that in print and saying, it. wow, you I know, almost it. 30 yeah. years. Dar and Michael published my book as well. My book, Why Am I So They're happy? amazing. They are amazing. They are amazing. amazing. And I'm very thankful for, for um, them, me being able to work with them. Yes. Yes. They are the best. They are the best. They, uh, um, tell me, what did that feel like for you after all those years to finish your book and get it published? I can just imagine. It was surreal. I didn't even believe it. I, I still don't. Um, I hold it in my hands. I can see it's, you know, the words are printed. I, but it, it's just not real yet. It hasn't kicked in, actually. And that's, you know, this is the first one. The Butterflies is already published. So I, it's all surreal to me. I still can't believe it. You know, because I actually uh, originally wanted to major in English. Um, I ended up majoring in psychology, but originally my major was English um, with the hopes of becoming a published writer. And I'll never forget, I had a lot of wonderful professors at Lehman College, 99.9% .9 wonderful professors, but there was this one and he was uh, tough love. I, I, I wrote a creative narrative for him as was the assignment. And, you know, he marks it up all red ink, you know, <laughs> slashes and cuts of red ink. And, uh, you know, I go up to him and I say, well, professor, I don't understand because, you know, my favorite author is J.D. Salinger and this is the way he writes. He sort of just makes you feel like you're talking to, having a one-on-one -on -one with the character. And that's what I wanted to portray. And he looked at me in the eye and he says, you're no J.D. Salinger. And I changed my major probably a week later and went into psychology. So, um, so for this to have um, come to fruition, yeah, it's, it's extremely surreal because I had abandoned the idea Yes. at one point. Oh, and that is such an awesome example, Joey, of a dream we never, we never really give up on it. I mean, or it's always there. We can put yeah. it aside and who knows 20, 30 years down the road that can come yes. into fruition. And I'll, I have to share, Absolutely. I did a little similar thing in high school. I loved English. And I told, I remember it in high school saying to myself, I'm going to write a book one day. I didn't yes. write my book until I was 60 years old. I mean, but you never, wow. you never know when that dream yes. or goal can can open up and happen. So what is the theme of moving on? Absolutely. So moving on is a story about an 18 year old young man who is coming out of a, a world of drugs and alcohol. And, you know, essentially he's trying to make a better life for himself. So, and he's having a rough go at it. It's, it's not an easy thing. He's trying to reacclimate himself back into society. Um, you know, friends and family are trying to help him and, and, through these relationships, you know, he, he tries to find his way. He tries to find his way back to, uh, you know, semblance of, of normalcy. Wow. And you're, you're actually experiencing this with him because it's written in the first person. So, you know, he's sort of, you're, you're going along with him on the journey. He's speaking to you. Yes. So, um, you, you sort of my hope is that you connect with the character and you sort of empathize with him you're not always going to like him he's going to say some things and do some things that you know just piss you off and you know yeah. sort of make you want wish you could yell at him say you know grab him and say what are you thinking what are you doing but that's that's what i was going for that's what i was hoping for mm -hmm. that you could make this connection with this character and you know at the end sort of you know you're, you're rooting for him you know yes. he's not making all the, the right decisions but you're rooting for for him to, to make it. And I would think that, you know, that would help others to, that know something, know, are going through that or know someone is, you know, or a family member 
they can read that book and, and realize they're not alone. Oh, you're back. I'm back. Yay. All righty. Okay. Oh, yeah. Sorry, everybody. We lost we lost touch for a moment. Uh, I was just mentioning, Joey, that that theme of that book would be so fantastic for someone going through some kind of addiction or someone who knows someone that is. Yes, yeah, realize uh, absolutely. It's not alone. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that's essential. You know, a lot of times we feel like we're alone and we're the only ones going through a particular problem, but mm -hmm. there are billions of us out here in the world all going through our different, you know, stripes and struggles. And it's good to know that we're not alone and, and there are others that can relate to us and, you know, people that we can reach out to or even a book that you can read and say, hey, wow, I'm going through that. Yes. And what I've learned in my lifetime is when you experience having some kind of addiction or situation in your life, it really does open your eyes and give you a new vision. My, my husband, when I was running my restaurant, we had our kids and he loved his job. Life was great. And then his Crohn's acted up and he had a couple surgeries that were horrifically painful. And he got addicted to the pain pills. Oh, sorry to hear that. Got depressed, added vodka. Oh, no. And passed away at 34. I oh, mean, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. What? Oh, thank you. But, you know, it really opened my eyes to, you know, how something can happen to someone or they can get addicted to something or a challenge. And really, you know, it can take them over and it. It may, it may not be the path they wanted. It can happen. And it really gives you a, a greater right. understanding for others. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. A great message, Joey. That is a great message. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, tell us about your other book as well, The Butterflies in Production. I love that title. So uh, the, the other one. <laughs> yes. Yes, there is a story behind that title, actually. Um, and it's a tribute to my dad who passed away from uh, COVID uh, this past February. Uh, he used to own a nightclub back in the 1970s. It was huge in the Latin industry. A lot of top name uh, Latin artists performed uh, at, his, at his establishment. And the name of that club was, in Spanish, it's La Mariposa, which is uh, Spanish for butterfly lady butterfly so that was the butterflies aspect and then in production in the 1980s he went on to uh, sort of start a production company where if you had any talent singing dancing whatever uh, what have you you'd go on stage and you display this talent and a lot of the the people that went on so uh, the name of that production was called in production so there you have butterflies in production, sort of a tribute to my dad's um, legacy. Oh, beautiful. What a beautiful tribute. Yes. Uh, and then, you know, so I, I just hope that uh, up there in heaven, you know, he has time to, to give it a, a read because it was for him. Yes, yes. And as an author, wouldn't you say it's, it really is amazing and such a step out there for us to put feelings and thoughts and experiences in a book to share with others. I mean, that that really is beyond Absolutely. words, isn't it? It's a privilege. It's, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's also a responsibility, you know, yeah. because there's great power in words. So, you know, it, um, you have to carefully think about what you're putting on paper because people read this and they take these things, you know, to heart. Yes, that is so true. That is so true. And, you know, I know with, with my book, it was just, I would think of things, oh, and make little notes and write that down. And, you know, just things would come to me and it was just an expression. And I think that is in so many yes. books out there. 
and you know yes your books they're both an expression of feelings and thoughts and words and wisdom that you want to share with everyone I appreciate that that's kind of yeah that's that's what I'm going for I, I want to tell stories that people can relate to I think that's that was my biggest concern when I was writing, like, I want people to be able to relate to this and will they relate to it? And will it be interesting? You know, will it, will it keep their interest and, and make them want to continue reading? You know, these things are on my mind. So I'm, I'm not just writing for myself. I'm writing for everyone. <laughs> just, I want to make sure everybody's uh, entertained. Writing for everyone. I love it. So yeah. here's the big question, Joey. Do you, yeah. do you foresee a third yes. book in your future? Do you think that will happen? I am, I am working on the third book as we speak. Oh, how yes. wonderful! Tell us about it. Yeah. So, um, essentially, well, essentially, so the first two books, you know, they're or you may or may not know, uh, they're they're related. Um, moving on uh, is the catalyst to butterflies. Butterflies ends up being uh, five short stories which um, encapsulate the lives of some of the people that you meet in moving on and gives them their own, their own sort of um, puts the microscope on them. Um, and then, you know, it, it sort of brings to light also social and moral issues that we deal with as a society, you know, interracial inter relationships, um, you know, uh, domestic violence in the home, you know, and, and things like that. So um, the third one now totally removes itself from moving on. Um, instead, it begins its own, it's, it has its own life, you know, it's its, its own creation. Um, the fifth story of Butterflies does have, I introduce a new character called Jasper Loring in, in Butterflies in production of the fifth story. He and uh, a character uh, also in that story will appear in the third book. They are, they will trans, transfer over to the, to the third book. Um, but other than them, completely different stories completely different stories with uh, brand new characters. Oh, oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. Oh my gosh. Well, I would like you to share uh, for a moment any contact information or information how- Yeah, it's, you know, it's still in the baby stages, you know. I compare it to others and then, you know, so little by little, little by little, I'll get there. Yes, yes. So how uh, is your, tell us where your books are available and how they can get a hold of those, Joey. Okay, I think oh, we're back. Sorry, everybody, I think we had a moment. Okay, Joey, share with us where everyone can get a hold of your books and any contact information you'd like to share. Yes, so um, they're both available on Amazon. So if you go to Amazon, if you have an Amazon account or just log on to amazon.com, uh, you type in JL Caban and they'll pop up. You'll see butterflies in production and moving on. Yay, I love it. And they're, they're both available in uh, paperback as well as ebook format. I love it, I love it. And I would like to share to anyone out there that is in the process of writing a book, sharing their, their inspiration and their passion. And you wanna connect with Michael and Dar, who uh, Joey and I just recommend so high. Pop me an email at paula at wellnessinspired.com and I will connect you with them. Because, oh, our, and how wonderful for us to get to connect through them and meet each other, Joey. I love it. I'm really grateful. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm, I'm very grateful for the opportunity they gave me. And um, not just them, but also uh, there's one other I'd like to thank within that production team. And that's Tom Colloran, who um, edited the book. And so he's he's done an amazing job. He's, oh, he's awesome, a genius, isn't he? Tom is yeah. awesome. I yeah. love it. Not oh. to mention that he looks like a superstar. If you've ever seen a picture of him, he just looks like he should be in movies. So, oh, I have not um, seen his picture. I'm going to have to ask Dar to send me a picture. <laughs> yes. 
James oh. Bond should, is in his future. He's he, he's got the whole look. So I love it. And I then also, it. also, I'd like to thank um, part of the production team uh, was Michaela Thompson, who was the photographer. Um, if you grab a copy of the book, there's a picture that she took, and this is I don't know if you could see it. It's on the back of the book. Yes. Um, just an amazing shot, and uh, I want to thank her for that. Yeah. So she did and, that picture. And, it is. It's fantastic. Yes. Picture. Yeah. Yeah, she did a great job with that. But I also want to thank my wife, who is a huge supporter, um, always telling me to keep going, do it, you know, um, with moving on. She's, it was, you know, her guidance that helped me to sort of, you know, pick, pick up the pieces and start putting them back together again with that book. Um, so if it wasn't for her words, even to this day, I mean, her words, I, she's, she's my guiding light. So um, anytime that I have any doubt or anything like that, and my brother as well, my brother is my therapist, so I don't have to pay for therapy because I just go straight to my brother and, you know, he's my, uh, resident therapist. Oh, yeah. I love it. That is so awesome. Well, with a few minutes left in the show, what last words do you want to leave with everybody today, Joey? I think the, the most important thing is don't quit. Whatever you're doing, whatever your dream is, don't quit because, you know, dreams don't have an expiration date. So, you know, if you don't do it this year, you don't do it in the next five years or 10 years, you know, there's no expiration date on a dream. So I don't care how old you are or, or how many years it's been since you've last picked up that flute or written in your journal or whatever your skill is or your dream is, don't quit, you know? Dreams are meant to be realized, whether it's today or 50 years from now, do it. Oh, I love that. That is such a powerful statement. And that is so true. Dreams don't have an expiration date. We can always yeah. pick back up and finish that dream and work towards that dream, can't we? Absolutely. Oh, that is a beautiful message. Oh my gosh. Well, I, I think I'm going to give myself the theme for my day today is, okay, what dream am I going to continue with today? Or what dream am I going to create? <laughs> yes, absolutely. And also, you know, um, I, have, I have four children. Um, three of them are adults already. I have my daughter, Ashley, who's 32. My son, Jesse, who's 24. Joey is 21 and the baby of the bunch is Julian, Julian Lincoln. And, you know, also for them, you know, it, it helps me keep my dreams alive because I see my, them and I want to, to give them something that they can be proud of. Yes. So. Oh, that is the best. Yes. Uh, family is the best. And, yes. and myself being a Grammy now, I just had Grammy time yesterday. Oh, awesome. My grandson was at the house and I went to take, it's time to go home. Can I stay longer? I mean, you don't get a better <laughs> compliment than that. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, it's so fun. Oh, I love it. Yes. And it's amazing what support of our family members and friends. And, yeah. and I really appreciate you uh, acknowledging that and, you know, they, that keeps us going. And that, and when we have challenges, it's the family and friends and those that care about us that get us through. It yeah, really absolutely. I agree. Makes a huge difference in our life. And, you know, that, that's one of the reasons I, I wrote my book. So, yeah. Oh, Joey, I am so excited. And when you finish your third book, I want to get together again and absolutely share that with everybody and I just want to share with everybody that I am so grateful to be able to share my amazing guests with you and have you part of you know everybody together being informed and inspired and caring about each other Joey you are just amazing I applaud you and thank you so much for being on the show Oh, thank you for having me. The pleasure was mine.
Oh, so, so grateful. Love, hugs, and blessings to everybody, and happy holidays. All right. And Joey, happy holidays. And uh, just, we're just going to keep going as a team, all of us. Absolutely. Happy holidays to everyone. Oh, thank you, everyone. Bye.